What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Process Sports Radio. We got a special guest back, Balrod from More Than Sports. Balrod, yeah. it's been a minute. It's a quick one today. We're going to do a recapping round one, preparing for round two of the NBA playoffs because there's been so many different storylines. So let's get straight into it right now. Um, of course, you can follow us on one of our socials. We will make sure we post that all in there. But Balrog, let's get right into it. Uh, yes, sir. What is going on with LeBron and the Lakers? Uh, they're missing Anthony Davis to state the obvious, I would say. But uh, as long as I've been watching LeBron James on a personal level and everything that I've like I've been watching the guy like I feel like I know enough to like give criticism on him yeah uh he made more threes than the Lakers did yesterday by himself and he's been attempting a lot of threes so I was watching the game starting from the playing game with Golden State where I was like okay LeBron just not being able to drive the way he usually is and then obviously the notion around the media is like oh he'll play, he's gonna play on it then he'll get better he'll get in shape like the typical LeBron type of stuff and then game one I was like yo he's in the post more but he's not driving I think he drove like twice in that game total because I was counting it because again me being me trying to like speculate on LeBron mm -hmm. and now that I realized he legitimately can't get lift off that foot he can't explode and I was going back and forth with one of my fans on my podcast and he was saying that Oh, it's not LeBron. It's actually the team. They're not being able to hit wide open shots, which I agree with. But I've watched LeBron long enough where he can usually cover for those flaws and still keep you in the game. The biggest thing I've ever heard with LeBron is like, as long as LeBron's on the court, you always have a chance to win the game. For the first time in my life in a long time, I was like, LeBron James has been erased today. And... You could say Father Time's catching up, but again, I'm not ready to say that. But from what my eyes are telling me right now, it doesn't look like he's healthy. Most definitely. I 100% agree with you on that. I think, like, going to the playoffs, I predicted the Lakers would win in seven. Yeah. I, this is the first time I've really seriously thought about it after seeing what happened. I didn't really watch last night because there was a way better game on with oh, Dallas. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Denver and Portland. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I definitely think that LeBron's not 100% healthy. And this team without Anthony Davis is essentially the 2018 Cavs. With a shittier LeBron. With an older LeBron. <laughs> with an older LeBron. You look at 2018, they had LeBron who was basically one of the best versions of LeBron that we've ever seen. Yeah. Right? He carried that team with J.R. Smith, Kyle Korver, you know, Jordan Clarkson, pre six man of the year. Yeah. Right? Like it's it's not looking good and here's the thing comes back to anthony davis he's the key yeah right as a lot of lebron teams are right you know what you're gonna get from lebron right he's a common denominator you know what you're gonna get from him it's the secondary star yeah right when it was miami d wade was always injured kyrie he was there but he was also injury prone and then he flaked out yeah. now it's anthony davis anthony davis he's not he's supremely talented right like you, top five talent, if top healthy. five talent, he's not a top five player because yeah. the best availability, the best attribute is availability. He's never Agreed. available, right? Yep. And you cannot count on guys like KCP, Caruso, Kuzma, Drummond, THT, THT. even though yeah. THT is a very good young player, yeah. you can't Montrez. count on those guys when you got to go when you went against a guy like Chris Paul, who is a floor general. Yeah, DeAndre Aiden is a grown man in the in on the block. Devin yeah. Booker, we know what Devin Booker is. He's a scoring machine. Well, like Cameron both. Payne is playing out of his mind right now, right? Yeah. And the Lakers are in very big trouble. As we see in this league, you need to have at least two guys. Yeah. Right? That can go get you, you know, that you can rely on to get you buckets when the time gets tough, right? Yeah, just asked Dave Miller that yesterday. Let's segue right into that right now, right? <laughs> I was watching that game yesterday, man. I was like, this guy right here. Next to Steph Curry might be the greatest shooter we've ever seen. Yeah, I right? yeah yeah yeah. And it, he was hitting shots like it reminded me of Kobe Bryant. Remember that one series against uh, Phoenix? Yeah. I think it was 2010, and yeah. he was just hitting like these just absolutely absurd, absurd shots where you had no, you're like no only like two people in the world to hit this shot. Yeah. Right. And it was absolute waste because CJ McCollum stepped out of bounds. Roko could not like couldn't dunk the ball, right? <laughs> um, I still think the Blazers will win in seven. Yeah, right? I still have I have more faith in the Blazers coming back to win than I do the Lakers. Wow, 
Wow, that's the bold statement of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm low key hurt. I'm watching the Lakers game. I'm like, I'm gonna watch this just because I want to feel this pain, right? LeBron didn't even really give a fuck. He's like, I'm out. Like halfway through the game. Yeah, five left, minutes right? left in the game, he just left. <laughs> anyway, so I'm. Uh, I get into inside the NBA, and uh, all of a sudden, like Dame's going crazy, and like everybody on like Twitter is blowing up, like, yo, it's Dame time, Dame time, and I'm like, yo, what's happening, right? The man hits it. They go into overtime legitimately the same shot but it's he's just like you know what i feel like i can hit this i don't even care who's in front of me again like that kobe mentality of like i don't see you <laughs> i'm gonna get to my spot and i'm gonna hit this i remember looking at austin rivers on the ground like literally looking to the skies for like help yeah. of god like yo like, can this guy please miss yeah can he please miss right and I'm thinking like in Dame's perspective because he's in kind of that like LeBron 07 against the Pistons mode where another thing I was thinking about exactly yeah just carrying the team on his back like at that point like Dame passed that shot up to CJ and as hot as he was and again like we're not professionals here and I the, he made the right play in my opinion but sure. me being like he has that Kobe mentality. I'd rather live with Dame taking that shot and yeah. we'd live with it. Now, and I feel like the team wouldn't have a problem with it either. Earlier in, the, or I think it was in the fourth quarter, the first overtime, Dame passed up to CJ. He hit a corner three. It's a big shot, right? Okay, yeah. So I can see what Dame was thinking. But CJ, I, I love CJ McCollum's game. I think it's a very fluid game. He's a yeah. very smooth player, right? He's yeah. got that skill set. For me personally, I think, I think Portland, if they want to take that next step, they got to shake this core up. And you're not going to trade Dame. I think you can move CJ and yeah. get a bigger two guard slash three, yeah. right? I'm not let's saying... Just, let's, let's just touch up on that question because actually somebody, when we were debating on our... When you posted the Dame thing, somebody asked, what is CJ McCollum's value that yeah. makes Damian Lillard, guys, a contender for next year? You know what? So this is going to sound really crazy to me. Really okay. crazy to a lot of people, right? Because, you know, there's beef and everything. If the uh, speak of the, the Clippers game is on right now, if the yeah. Clippers fla flame out in this first round against Dallas, right? Yeah, I could see a CJ for Paul George swap because the, what do the Clippers need? The Clippers need a point guard that can get a bucket and can you know make pl make plays and ha and you know carry the rock, right? Yeah. What has Portland needed for such a long time? A yeah, wing, a, a, a wing, wing a that a two way wing, wing right? Yeah. So I could see, hey, you take Paul George, you take CJ McCollum. That, that you you actually hit that's that's a fair trade on paper it's if, not it's not both crazy ways. Right? I, I know yeah, I know yeah, I know Dame I know Dame and you know PG had their beefs and stuff like that yeah but I think that could really work right I think it could, it could I work. in terms of value I 100% but does that still make them a contender in the West and that's Paul George legit being what his fourth team i would say fourth or third this would be his fourth team yeah and he's gonna put, come back and you reunite with uh mellow because they played in okc for a year well, i don't know i i think mellow like i think mellow likes portland but i don't think we know what mellow is mellow's you know he's good to get you like he'll go on spurts some nights he'll get you like 20 25 points yeah. he's gonna average his 12 to 14 yeah, points yeah. a game right yeah having a guy like you know i like what robert covington is i think robert covington is a very good three indie type player right they're all good complementary players they're all, all they just need they have the good complementary pieces they just need that secondary guy that fits better with dame because they're him and cj are both two small guards i would like to see one bigger guard one yeah or uh a quick question for you uh what okay if you were to take clay thompson and replace him with cj mccollum and then give cj mccollum to the warriors everybody considered being healthy do you, how much difference do both of them make I think Portland takes a way bigger step than Golden State would. You think Golden, so? Golden State takes a step down, yeah. and Portland takes a large step forward. Because Klay Thompson, what do we? I know it's been two years since we've seen yeah. him play, but what does Klay Thompson do? He plays both sides of the floor. Yeah. CJ McCollum is a one-way player, right? Yeah. Him and Dame are not very good defensively, right? Yeah. Klay Thompson can take the number one option of a team and defend him. He goes with one guarding LeBron yeah. in those finals battles, right? He was guarding yeah. Kyrie, right? 
I would honestly love if somehow, like, obviously, I don't think Clay wants to leave the Bay and he no. loves Steph. Like, that's just their duo. Like, that's who they are. That is what it is, right? Spot but I feel like time. I feel like if they if somehow Portland could get someone like on the caliber of like a Clay Thompson, because again, I don't think a lot of people respect Clay's game on the other side of the thing. Like, he's amazing, bro. Like, look what happened to Toronto, right? Nobody really goes to Toronto, right? Yeah. Every summer, what is it? There's always a disgruntled superstar that wants out of their current situation, right? Yeah. You might have to take that one year bet where hey okay we put all of our chips in the middle right yeah. and we go for it yeah like hey we got dame yeah. we can i think they need a better coach as well i think they need yeah. to get more I, I like terry scott terry stotts is a good coach yeah but i don't think he has like that ability to take his team to the next gear yeah right? i agree so i think if you can get a guy you know with the right coach the right yeah. leader and you get a disgruntled or whoever it is there's yeah. probably going to be one Whoever it's gonna be this this summer, right? Yeah. If you can move a piece like CJ and get a player a rental, back, a a rent, rental, a rental right? Yeah. And you can make that gamble. Now, work yeah. for Toronto it might not work for Portland if they do the same thing, right? Yeah. But I think if you have a generational player like Damian Lillard, yeah, you gotta try. I you agree. Try. I agree, hundred percent. You owe it to him that much just to be like, okay, we'll just gamble our assets just so you can get another player, and then it's up to you to be like, hey, what we have in Portland. We can st- we we can build on here, right? And then it's it's up to Dame if he just this feels like, hey, you know what? I done everything I can, and it's not working. That's your decision, right? Again, I feel as if Dame has already done enough in yes, Portland where definitely. he shouldn't be criticized for him being like, yo. Now, like, here's the other thing: Dame just signed two years ago, signed a brand new contract that yeah. kicks in at the start of next year. So mm-hmm. he's still got a four more years left with it on his deal in Portland. Did he have an option for the fourth? Probably. Most likely it's three years plus an option, right? Isn't that isn't that what like a lot of like a Giannis and like Luca are supposed to come around that time too, I believe. Probably, right? Because Giannis just signed like the the super max deal, right? So yeah, whatever it works out, it works out. But he's still committed to Portland for the long haul, right? So it's gonna be interesting how that shakes up, but I think they need to make that next move. The Mavericks. And the Clippers. I'm hoping the Mavericks beat the Probably Clippers. one of the weirdest series in a long time where both teams won on the opposite floor. Road teams are road, road teams are dominating, right? Yeah. And- we legitimately went from the Clippers are the saddest team. They don't even deserve to play in the uh, Staples Center. Like I saw yeah. that tweet. I was like, God damn, yeah. savages. To uh going back to Dallas where they had like full capacity of fans which is a big advantage the your, Laker cow- fan- your Cowboys were in the building man I saw <laughs> Zeke I saw Dak I saw Van Der Esch, I saw Jalen Smith I saw Michael Irvin I saw them all yeah, the they're, they're like we could probably learn something from Luca. The, 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 the winning formula but uh yeah even he uh Luca was like killing it in LA playing with such confidence like playing freely what was the word that I wanted to use but he was off- all of a sudden, they come back to Dallas, and then they remember they went on like a thirty to four four yeah. start to the quarter. Oh my game over, peace. Come back, Kawhi's like I still got no, it. What happened was I think what happened we saw is Luca. Luca owns the Clippers. Like he gets what he wants against Patrick Beverly, Paul George, Kawhi. They he's averaging like thirty. He's averaging like thirty eight points a game, right? Yeah, yeah. You're too little. The problem. The problem is right. Yeah. Tim Hardaway stopped hitting his shots. Yeah. You know, Finney Smith stopped hitting his shots. Those guys were hitting their threes in. At the Staples Center in LA, and they they're shooting like above fifty percent, right? From three? Some, they hit like eighteen threes in one <laughs> game or something like that. It was something crazy like that, right? The Lakers so, wish they could get that. And that. You're seeing that, like you saw it with Damian. If your secondary pieces just can't hit shots, you're not going to win games, right? All um, right, let's go over to the Eastern Conference. Brooklyn, Milwaukee. That is that feeling like whoever wins that series makes it to the finals. Yeah, unless. Joel Embiid is going to tell us why he should have won MVP because I think Jokic gets it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the only way I see, because I feel like this is going to be the most entertaining series maybe we get unless we get like the Lakers and the Nets in the finals, which doesn't seem at the best. I, I, right I don't now. think a Lakers Nets final will be very, very exciting to be honest with you. Um, I Let's don't just cover this and we can get into that. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. So uh, Milwaukee and the Nets, this is great because. We have people believing that Drew Holiday is the missing formula to the Bucks, right? I think it's a perfect headline if they had him two years ago and the year before, but now they just match up with the just the just like like blue eyes shining dragon. If anybody gets the analogy, yeah. three headed dragon that are just all just. I don't know how somebody stops the Nets because now here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, right? So Drew Holiday 
once locked down Damian Lillard in a playoff series when yeah. he's in New Orleans, right? Yeah. He can. I think he can take Kyrie, right? He can guard Kyrie. Tough you know, guard. Tough, tough guard. Tough guard. Don't get me wrong. Tough yeah, guard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But Drew Holiday can handle his own out there. Yeah, right? I agree. I agree. Right? I'll give him that. Ky- then you got Giannis, who's defense former last year's defensive player of the year. Put him on KD. Now KD's, you know, a different dude offensively, right? <laughs> but like I said, Giannis and him, you know, they'll make he'll make KD work. He'll for make him. KD work, right? Now KD yeah. has that ability to hit those shots where yeah. Know, Kevin Durant can hit, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you put throw James Harden. Now, can Chris Middleton guard James Harden? I, Depending I on the day, I guess. I it's it's see that's where it gets to like. I, I think we both agree that James Harden might be the X factor for this series. He's the key, bro. And I think that's for this whole season. That's why they got him. Yeah. Because you look in the East, right? It's all it's all matchup based, right? So James yeah. Harden is the X factor. James, yeah, they got James Harden, and shout out to James Harden for being a really good teammate this year. Uh, like he's got a lot of like, yo, you were good to Houston or this and that. And he, you know what he just said? He's like, you know what? F everyone. I'm gonna take a back roll to Kyrie and KD because I'm ready to win a chip, and I'm gonna show people what James Harden's about. And if James Harden is like they're playing on this rate, I think they should win this series in six. That's what I'm predicting, but. I don't think it's any shorter than six. If the Bucks win, I think they won in seven. I think, yeah, Nets in six. Um, just because Harden, dude, he got a 30 point triple double yesterday. Yeah, and quick side note, I feel like Harden's has been playing on like cruise mode for like the last like but I think Harden, months. he looks like he's on cruise control because his game comes so easy to him, right? Yeah. But he just the way he he's got like that kind of Tracy McGrady type game where it just comes so easy to him. It looks like he's not trying, but it's yeah. just so easy. It's so fluid, his game, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that that series to me is, like like you said, is like whoever comes out of that series, I don't even think Philly can match up. Because I think if Milwaukee gets past Brooklyn, they're going to be playing with so much confidence that I don't think Philly can stop them, right? Because yeah. they just beat Miami, the team that knocked them out last year. Yeah, they're gonna if they be, go through in Brooklyn, that's the favorite everybody expects to win the title. Yeah, they're gonna play with so much confidence, so much flow, right? And then if Brooklyn goes through, I mean, I don't, I, as good as Ben Simmons is defensively, right? You can only guard one guy, you can't guard both Kyrie, KD, and right? And Embiid out, Embiid out on the perimeter, who's gonna can he keep up with any of those guys? I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, that's what that's why I said that I feel like. Joel Embiid ha- is going to have to show us on why he should have won MVP, like why he was the most valuable player to his team. And I feel like we could scratch everything if Joel Embiid decided to, where I mean is like, you know what? I'm not going to shoot these three pointers. I'm not going to stay on the perimeter. Just give me the ball. We're going to go old school. Doc Rivers is like, just throw it in there. And we're just going to beat them up. But again, I don't know if they'll ever use that, but I know as Doc being as smart as he is, maybe he has that saved for either the Bucks or the Nets. I don't know, but that's assuming if the 76ers get past the hot net, uh, the hot Hawks right now. Yeah, uh, look, quick update. Luca just hit a uh, nasty three um, and the Mavericks are now up again. So, um, but yeah, I think the East, I think Philadelphia goes through Atlanta pretty easily. Yeah. With or without Embiid, I think that they're just too good. Better um, coaching, better coaching, better players, more experienced players. Yeah. Um, but that Milwaukee Brooklyn series is basically the Eastern Conference Finals, in my opinion. Yeah, it is basically. Yeah. It's going to be uh, very exciting. Um, it's uh, it's the NBA playoffs are in full effect, and I love it. It's very yeah, exciting. 100%. That, that's it. It's simple as that. So anyway, guys, take care, stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon.